Hey guys, Pickle700 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be installing this key switch because if you would have seen my last video, you would have saw I did all this conduit right here, feeding the fire alarm control panel right here. I still don't have a board for it because this is actually only one day after making that old video, but I have obtained a key switch now, which will go here. And the reason I'm putting that in is because I want a means of disconnect to the panel because I could just turn off the breaker, but that also means the emergency and exit sign come on and I cannot open the garage door and I lose all the fun stuff like fun lights and fog machines. And you gotta have fog machines 24-7, so we don't want to do that, so that's why we're gonna put in a key switch here so that it can't be easily tampered with with someone that doesn't have the key but it's also an easy and quick way to disconnect the fire alarm panel. Let's turn that back on in case I want to play with fog machines. I also have a couple of security cameras on this circuit which don't have any battery backup right now and they get kind of screwed up whenever the power goes out so I want to be able to keep that circuit on. So I'm going to be doing this live but I've done this many times before so I'm comfortable with it but if you're not comfortable or know what you're doing, don't do that. So this video isn't really an educational video, but this anything that I do in this video would also work on a regular light switch. Now this key switch is actually a three-way key switch where you have your black wire, which would normally be your power in, and your two gold terminals would be your travelers to the next three-way. I'm not going to explain how a three-way switch works because that's not the point of this video, but that doesn't matter because we can just use the black and the uh, brass colored one. We're going to begin by taking off this old cover plate. Okay, so as you can see, we're now in the box. So we only need two of the wires, which is our two hot wires right here. So we just have to be, be careful and remember that this is live. Okay, so to be safe, this is our power coming in, so we're going to cap off this one right here. And since these wires are a little bit um, coiled up, we're just going to we're just going to cut them off. Now we're just going to tighten the terminals that we know we don't need. And I am in Canada, so we do not need uh, ground on our switches because all of our boxes are bonded. Even our plastic boxes in Canada do have a bonding strip that goes from the back up and around that bonds the switch through its screw. You can use it, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but you don't have to. And we won't need this traveler wire right here, so we can put this one in. Just like that. Another thing, this is a pretty nice switch because this is spec grade. There's a few different grades of switch. I think spec grade it might be the best. That or it's the second best. So now we can strip our two wires. To be safer, you will strip your load wire first and then your line one after. There we go. Now there's no polarity, it doesn't matter which one goes to which. So again, we're gonna just do our load wire first. And now this does, it's not backstab, but they do have the pieces of metal that it goes under. So you don't actually have to wrap it, it just goes under that piece of metal. Backstab I don't like, because the connections can come loose and they can arc and melt the, the switch so 
they're not very good solid connections in my opinion there's our one made And now to make sure the switch is safe, we're going to wrap it along around an electrical tape. I don't think you're required to, but it's a good habit to get into because whoever works on it next, which in this case will probably be me, it makes it a lot safer for them. Now again, mindful of the terminals, especially that there's another three-way one on that side, which even when the switch is off, that one could be live or vice versa because it's a three-way switch. That's especially good in this case to wrap it. Two or three wraps is enough. And there we go. All the terminals are covered up. Now we can push our switch back into the back of the box. If our neutral could get over there and cooperate, that would be nice. There we go. So there we've basically just bonded the switch. Now the screw is in. This is the one that really matters because it's got the extra copper around there to make sure it's has a good solid connection to earth There, and now we can put our cover plate back on. This one won't work though, so we need this one. There we go. So right now the switch is in the off position and as you can see, right here we have no power. So if we put our key in and put it to the up position, so there we have a tamper resistant switch. So obviously with your hand can't turn the switch on or off you pretty much need the key or to make some sort of key that would suffice so this switch might not actually stay because there is another type of key switch I might be putting in this one works fine for now but I might be getting actually an even more tamper resistant one so this is Loveton's slightly tamper resistant one I guess you could say but then there's also this one that takes a more traditional key see if this can focus okay that that's what the key looks like to the more tamper resistant one so it turns more like a traditional key sideways so I may get that one or this one might stay but either way hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful either way make sure to hit the thumbs up button and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe thank you for watching